Hello, this is Miss Augustine, and we are still talking about bonding, and we're still talking about covalent bonding, and today we're going to talk about intermolecular forces. So what are intermolecular forces? They are the attractive force that operates between molecules, and we don't want to confuse them with bonds because bonding is a completely different thing. We're just talking about, particularly if you're thinking about polar molecules where there's a plus side and a minus side of a molecule, you'll have attractive forces that happen between the plus and the minuses. So bonds are attractive forces that hold atoms together, but these intermolecular forces of attraction still take place because of the fact that there are electrons. So these intermolecular forces are much weaker than the bonding forces, and they're lumped into three big categories. So generally speaking, these intermolecular forces are known as van der Waals forces, and they're a collection of the weak interactions that take place between molecules. And the three types are, one, London dispersion forces, two, dipole-dipole forces, which we've talked about a little bit when we talked about water, and three, hydrogen bonding. So the London dispersion forces, if you think about it, electrons are in constant motion and they're not always equally distributed. So therefore, as molecules move around and encounter one another, the electrons are going to tend to repel away from each other. And what happens is for a few moments, you have a polar region in the molecule where the electrons move to one side of the electron cloud and the effect passes on to other atoms and so what you get is kind of a domino effect. So the London dispersion forces are the attraction between these temporary dipoles that form because the electrons are mushing around and getting far away from one another. What do we know about London dispersion forces? They occur between all atoms and molecules they're the only intermolecular force that happens in nonpolar substances, and they're relatively weak. So the second type that we talk about are dipole-dipole forces, and these are attractions among polar molecules. So with polar molecules, remember there's a plus end and a minus end of the molecule because the electrons are not equally shared. So one atom like oxygen might have the electrons closer to it and the hydrogen might not have the electrons near it so you have this plus minus region. So the electronegativity of atoms is what determines which part is which part is the positive and which part is the negative side of a molecule and again in things like water Hydrogen has a partial positive charge and oxygen has a partial negative charge. And so the water molecules are going to be attracted to themselves where, are the, where there are these positive and negative regions. And I'm just going to point out, if you hear noise, my dog is snoring sitting next to me. It's not me. So these positive and negative parts of the molecule tend to attract one another. And the third type is hydrogen bonding. And hydrogen bonding is an especially strong dipole-dipole force between molecules that contain hydrogen that's attached to another highly electronegative element. And although there is no bond between the molecules in the usual sense, it is a strong interaction. And the hydrogen bond is this special type of dipole-dipole force, and it is the strongest of the dipole dipole interactions. So when we talk about intermolecular forces, we talk about the London dispersion forces, and those are the attraction present in all molecules, and the larger the molecule, the larger the dispersion force. There are the dipole forces that are the attraction between polar molecules, and there are the hydrogen bonding, which is the very strong dipole-dipole interaction in molecules that have hydrogen and nitrogen, oxygen, or fluorine. So for now, this is Ms. Augustine signing off, and we will continue this with the next set of notes.